What's cooking everybody? Dave Mays here with Kinotika and today I have inside this box an item that may completely solve my issues with the Canon EOS R for video and that is a brand new Metabones Speed Booster for RF Mount. I'm just gonna be upfront and honest about this video. This is a first look and first impression video. I did spend some significant time with my friend Armando tonight using it, so take it for what it's worth, but I basically received this today, went out and shot with it all day, and that's what this video is about. It's just my opinion based on one day. The big question that I got on Instagram was, how's the autofocus performance? How's it look in 4K mode? So without any further ado, let's look at some of my example shots that I did with Armando. Fiera in Pomona, California. Let's go! So this is a vlog test with the EOS R in 4K without the speed booster. This is using the infamous 16 to 35 focal range. This is the F4 version with the IS. And now this is the exact same range that I was holding the camera from before, but now I'm shooting 1080p full frame at 16 millimeters again. All right, here it is. This is what you've all been waiting for. Does the 16 to 35 with the speed booster in 4K look good for vlogging? And the answer is sort of, it's definitely nowhere near as wide as the 1080p mode as I'm looking here on the screen. So yeah, this is what 4K looks like in vlog mode. I'm not using a Gorillapod or anything like that. I'm just using my hands to hold this. How's that jello look, that rolling shutter? Oh. I can't believe this actually exists. This EF to RF mount speed booster was something that everybody was talking about when the EOS R came out. And we were kind of thinking, well, maybe it's not possible because it's just not enough room there. The RF mount is so big and chunky compared to what we're used to with a Micro Four Thirds, for example, going to EF. There's actually a little dial here that you can use just like you would use the control ring dial on the RF mount. So you can set this to be whatever you want. I have it set to ISO. This speed booster is not intended for photography, it's really for video only. That's just because if you pop this on uh, your camera and you go into stills mode, you're gonna see some heavy vignetting. This is really designed for only one person, and that is somebody who shoots 4K video on an EOS R or the upcoming red kimono. This speed booster boosts your image by 0.71X, taking your EOS R's 1.75X crop to roughly 1.24X crop. So it's still not full frame, but it's much, much closer. In fact, it's very comparable to the 4K mode in my 1DC, also the 1DX Mark II. One great thing that I love about the speed boosters is they do include this nice little Arca Swiss mount on the bottom. You can remove it using just a hex screw. That's pretty cool. You can actually use that like straight on a grill pod if you really wanted to. And of course, one of the biggest benefits to using a speed booster like this is the additional low light performance that you get 
using a speed booster, you actually gain an entire stop of light using the speed booster on the R. You've got full electronic support here so you can control your aperture on the camera. And of course the autofocus does work through this thing from RF to EF. But there's something interesting about using this speed booster with an EFS lens, in my opinion, that I think actually makes this a better sell than using it with full frame lenses. And I'm gonna tell you about it right after this quick break talking about our sponsor today, Storyblocks. I took a break from my editing cave at Starbucks to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Storyblocks. And yes, it is actually raining quite a bit here in Southern California, which is not normal. Now let's face it, when you're creating videos, it's sometimes not possible to get all the shots that you need. That is where our sponsor today, Storyblocks, comes in. With thousands of stock footage clips to use, you can make all of your videos stand out by using stuff that you could never imagine using. There's not just drone shots, there's like real helicopter shots here. There's crazy time lapse and hyperlapse available. And if you wanna add some crazy stuff to your footage, you can even download some high resolution green screen Screen content like this tiger that just appeared on my shoulder. Most stock footage sites cost an arm and a leg to use because you have to pay per clip. Storyblocks doesn't do that. They charge an extremely reasonable price for a subscription that gives you access to literally everything on the site. If you use the first link in the description below, you can find out more about our sponsor, Storyblocks. I highly recommend them. I use their stuff all the time on this channel, and I think you will find that you love using Storyblocks as well. So click that link and subscribe to use Storyblocks. Now let's get back to that RF mount and out of this cold, wet rain. So the reason that I really love using EFS lenses on this mount so far is the fact that we get all the benefit of a true EFS lens, which is a smaller, more compact lens. I know this is a big lens, but this lens in particular is super tiny, super affordable, this amazing 10 to 18. But why I love using EFS glass with the speed booster on the EOS R in 4K is for two reasons. Number one, 4K mode is actually not a PSC uh, on here. Again, it's 1.74X, which is still quite a bit more than what APS-C actually is. APS-C for Canon is roughly 1.5, 1.6X, so you're actually cropping in a little bit more than you would if you were shooting on like an 80D, for example. So having that speed booster actually brings you up to 1.24X, right? Well, that's obviously a little bit more than a standard EFS mount lens would take, but you might be surprised. Some of these lenses can actually resolve a little bit more more than that APS-C rating. I found on this 10 to 18 with the speed booster, I was able to zoom out to about 12 millimeters without any vignetting. Test with 10 to 18 on the USR with the speed booster. I have electronic stabilization turned on and IS. Face tracking seems to work fine. It's wide. I do have a bit of a vignette in the image here. But if I zoom in right there to 12, looks good. And stabilization is perfect. I got IS on lens. In addition to the IS in camera, that's too much. It's right there, 12. That's the sweet spot. I think this is a huge deal for any EOS R user and even somebody who might be considering buying one now because of this, I think it's a great time to be in the market for an EOS R. Metabone speed boosters are always a great option for any camera that you're using. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put a link in the description below where you can buy this on Metabone site. Unfortunately, it's not available yet on b and and Amazon, but you can buy it from Metabones. Hopefully they will be continuing to update the firmware on this. They've done this in the past and hopefully that will fix any issues or bugs that may address itself. I haven't found any huge bugs yet with it, but again, I've only used it for a little bit. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on the Metabones Speed Booster for the EOS R camera. And definitely, again, check out Armando Fiera. I'll link him in the description below. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsor today, Storyblocks. And uh, yeah, thanks again, guys, for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Once again, I'm Dave Mays, and we'll see you next time.